the external spirituality of the unbeliever and the internal spirituality of the Christian. The third and a final area in which the Dunning-Kruger spirituality of the non-Christian shows itself is in how the unbeliever defines what is spiritually good and spiritually bad. There are three key differences in how the unbeliever defines what is spiritually good and bad when compared to the believer. The first has to do with judging by external actions versus internal intentions. If you were to ask an unbeliever to suppose that the entire world were created from nothing by an omnipotent creator who will judge all humanity, and then were to ask the unbeliever what his fate should be on that final day of judgment, Perhaps the most common response would involve the unbeliever pointing to various external actions that he has taken over the course of his life that he thinks are worthy of praise and commendation. If he did something particularly helpful to someone, for example, he might say that he has done his good deed for the day. What is noticeable about the response of the typical unbeliever to such a question, and also the response of some professing Catholics and Protestants, is that no attempt is made to give anything other than a list of external actions done by the person, as if the moral character of an action can be determined simply by an external description of the act without any further information. He will say that he bought a sandwich for a homeless man or gave money to a local soup kitchen, and it is simply assumed that God views such actions favorably. He will recount how he coached a son's baseball team, helped an elderly woman across the street, or replaced the flat tire of a driver stuck on the side of the road. These are supposedly good deeds in themselves. The good moral character of what the person did can supposedly be determined simply by knowing what the external action was, regardless of what was happening in the person's heart, and regardless of what his interior intentions were. The person accordingly thinks that such external actions will be counted in his favor on Judgment Day. However, this approach to judging the spirituality of a person and the morality of his actions is contrary to what Jesus taught. In his teaching, morally wrong actions can often be discerned by merely looking at the outward behavior, since there is no circumstance in which sins are morally acceptable. For example, there is no case in which willful adultery is ever anything other than a sin, and so there is no internal rationale that would ever justify it. But the situation regarding seemingly good actions is different. There, a seemingly good outward action can be the result of an evil intention, in which case God does not consider the act to be good, but he rather counts it as evil. The classic passage in the teaching that Jesus gave for this perspective is found in the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. In chapter 6, he points to the action of giving to the poor to be seen by men and the action of praying in public to be seen by men as two examples in which a man will receive no reward from the Father in heaven. That is, the seemingly outward, quote-unquote, good act of giving money to the poor or praying are not acts that God considers as morally good if the act is born from a heart that loves the praise of men and does the act primarily for the purpose of receiving man's praise. Before being able to declare that an act is morally good in a way that Jesus considers spiritually good or commendable, one must first ask the question of why and consider the question of intent. Why did the man give money to the poor? If it is because he loved the praise of men and saw using his gift to the poor as a way to cause others to think more highly of him, then his giving is an act of loving himself by means of the poor rather than an act of actually loving the poor. Thank you for listening. Credible Faith is a global missions-minded apologetics ministry with content available in seven different languages across seven websites, German, Russian, Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. If you would like to support the global apologetics work of Credible Faith, go to CredibleFaith.org and click on the Donate icon. If you would like me to give an apologetics workshop or participate in a debate at your university, or if you would like me to give a Great Commission Missions Conference or Apologetics Conference at your church, get in touch with me through the Contact Us section of the Credible Faith website. You can also submit a request through the website to get Credible Faith's monthly email. 
If you are a native speaker of Russian, German, Italian, French, Spanish, or Portuguese, and if you notice that an essay from the English website is not available on the Credible Faith website for your language, feel free to get in touch with me about translating the essay, and I would read through your translated material for quality control and the desire to see content from the essay made available in your language. Thank you for listening, and have a great night.